and welcome to the Indian Express, to this series of conversations with the most eminent men and women of our time, who will reflect upon the idea or ideas of India as seen through their work, and tell us, explain to us what this means as India celebrates 70 years of independence. I have with me today Mr. Fali Nariman, constitutional expert, legal luminary, some would even say a conscientious objector. Thank you, sir, for speaking uh, to the Indian Express. Thank you. Mr. Nariman, I, my first question to you is about your uh, comments some months ago when the CBI was raiding uh, one of uh, India's biggest news channels. And at the time, you said that the constitutional safeguards of speech in the Constitution were sacrosanct. What did you mean by that? Do you, do you, are you saying that today that's not, that we don't have it today? No, I don't think we don't have it, but we have it. We continuously have it and we'll always have it. The problem is to enforce it. Mm -hmm. It should be more often enforced because we, there's a, it's a very fine constitution that we have. In fact, my view is that it's a constitution that keeps India together uh, as it has been drafted, whether good or ill, because no one can draft another constitution. Because right. as you know, we, we Indians, each Indian has two opinions. So yeah. we, we have two billion opinions amongst us. So that the, it's, it's, a, it's a concrete force which keeps people together, in my view. And the institutions that it has set up are, to my mind, lasting. They are not worked as well as they should have been. In what way? Do you say, for example, the, that free speech is endangered? Do you feel that? Yes, but all sorts of things get endangered at different times, you see, because it's unnecessary. Because we are a society which so many different languages, so many different types of people, mm -hmm. in fact, so many peoples, as it were, all right. into one, uh, one little subcontinent that we call India, mm -hmm. <coughs> that uh, we have to be much more tolerant than we are. <coughs> and the, the b basic problem I think that we have is not so much the state, but the, the sort of sometimes uh, on provocations, certain sections of people rise against certain other sections of people. So, so give me an example. <coughs> when you say we should be more tolerant, what does that mean? By, by more tolerant, I mean <coughs> more accommodating one another, realizing that we are, we are disparate that we are not the same sort of people, we don't talk the same language, we have different customs, we have different uh, religions, we have all sorts of uh, disparities. So you think this plurality the is plurality endangered? Is a, plurality gets endangered by people at either the instance of other people or otherwise behaving in this particular manner. This is the problem that really faces us. And uh, I still remember many years ago when uh, uh, two judges of the Supreme Court of America came in mm -hmm. and uh, I was very young then and we were part of a committee which explained to them our constitution and we said how great our fundamental rights chapter was and so on. Mm. And Antonin Scalia, who is now dead, he was a judge of the, he came and he said, what are you talking about? He said, all your constitution, fundamental rights states is that the state shall not, the state shall not, the state shall not. Where is it that the people, one set of people should not go, don't go against another? What, what remedy do you have for that? Mm -hmm. And that's their Title 11, which they have in the United States. So, so what is, is the remedy for that? The no. state versus the people? Yes, that's not the state versus the people. Okay. People versus the people. Okay. Uh, that, that's the difference. You see, it's not, it may be at the instigation of a political party, it may be at the instigation of the state also. But... One set of people going against another set of people. Why do they go against another set of people and what's the remedy? What do we have? Do you feel that one set of people are going against another set yes, of people? Yes, yes, unfortunately, yes, it is. Nowadays, it goes on. Different sets of people. No, give, me, give me one example. Different ideas, but, but look at the Babri Masjid. That's the prime example, mm -hmm. which was just on the 6th of December. Yes. I mean, that, that was the prime example where some structure was demolished, doesn't matter what it was. But the structure was demolished and uh, nothing has happened since then. So nothing it's been 25 more. years since the demolition of the Babri Masjid. Yes. But sir, it was the Supreme Court, yeah. which on December I'm 6, not, 1992, yes, yes, yeah, I gave agree. permission I, for I the Kharjia. I agree, I agree. All those things we have to look back on and we have to perhaps, if we can remedy them, remedy them. But we can't. 
you see, things move on. Right? They don't go back and uh, you right. can't uh, and, uh, re re reconstruct. But do you think, in your view, if suppose you, if we, suppose you were to look back on yeah. 25 years, yes. uh, which have uh, you know, which we are now in the midst of? Yes. Now the Supreme Court at the time said, okay, you can do the car seva. It's a symbolic car seva. They yeah. were assured at the time yeah. by the Kalyan Singh government. And they were wrong. <laughs> and they were wrong. And they were wrong. You see, that that's the unfortunate part of this whole thing. It's not as if that. Judges are some superior beings. They are all part of us, part of our society, nor our lawyers, I mean, for that matter. We all have different views. I'm just saying that we don't have that spirit of tolerance which keeps a diverse society like ours together. So, and now, that needs to be cultivated as to how it can be cultivated, I don't know. But it's uh, been 70 it years. Does it, does it mean we go back to religion or we don't go back to religion or what do we do? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm myself, uh, I, don't, I don't think that religion uh, solves anything, on the contrary. But then religion, while we have a secular constitution, a secular republic, yeah. and we have this, you know, the relationship with religion in India is very unique. It's yeah. different from that in the West. Yes, yes. But increasingly we see that there but, are... But at the same time, it's so important. Religion has become so important. Uh, at the moment, I mean, everything becomes so important. Suddenly you find that uh, one man's religion is far more important. And then, and then th the problem you see is that 80% of us are Hindus. Yeah. And I'm not, but I mean 80% of us are Hindus. And it's not much good for someone who's a non-Hindu speaking about something. Well, he can be ignored, he or she can be ignored. But the, a large section of the intelli intellectual Hindus also, don't speak out against anything that's happening. That, that's, that's my great uh, regret nowadays, great regret. Of course, there are a very large number of people who do. There are the, 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 the journalists, there are the lawyers, there are the judges, and so on. But that's not enough, that's not enough. We must have a very large vocal section of those who profess the religion, Hindu religion, right. who also say that this is wrong, we can't have uh, this sort of carnage or this sort of uh, constant uh, bickering about one another's religion or so one do you another's feel, custom. Do you feel as a person, as a Parsi, yeah. somebody who belongs to a minority community, yes, do you yes. feel that very strongly yeah. that there is this majoritarianism in India is increasing? Oh yes, yes, and that's because of a majoritarian government. This is the problem. You see, when, when there was a majoritarian government, we didn't realize, many of us, that that was a Congress government before. Mm -hmm. And that was majoritarian also. Right. They wanted to amend our fundamental rights. They wanted to take them away. You're they talking about all... the emergency. I mean, yes, all sorts of things. So it's not as if uh, I blame one section or the other. It's, you see, that's where I, I believe, I believe that in our society, the coalition politics had a great deal of, of, uh, of it had a much, much support. Because, because there were more people wanting to see whether you agree with this view, you don't agree with this view, and, and then go along with that on so that. So today's... Uh, where, where progress can't be half as, half as quick or fast as it would otherwise be. So but the ruling would, party, the party in power today, the, party, the BJP, yes. which is um, headed by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, yes, yes. they have a majority in the Lok Sabha. Yeah, but that, that's the problem. <laughs> I don't. I don't think that's a great virtue. You see that. Why do you, Why do you say it's a problem? Yeah, because it has. It was the same way. Because any party which is in a total majority and has all the votes always wants to amend the constitution, remove this, remove that, building a society nearer my heart's desire, like in the Omar Khayyam poem. You see that. That's the sort so of. So the relationship of the BJP with the with the Ram I'm not saying only BJP. Okay. It's the Congress as well. Right. Uh, they did the same thing. I mean, when they in had fact, to during say, the emergency, when you were additional solicitor general and you resigned, yes. because in protest of the yes, violations, yes, yes, the next day, yes, quite right. In yes. protest of the violations of the yeah, constitution, but also, yeah, which I believe would happen, and they did happen. But you feel that in today's in India, in today's India, there's there is there is a sort of a an upsurge of feeling that I must build this India nearer my heart's desire, nearer what I think is right. <laughs> and that's, so, that's so, to if my the, mind. so if the BJP is saying that they will build a Ram Janmabhoomi yeah, temple, yeah, that's okay. Temple, build it uh, by all means. 
That's but not the point. That doesn't bother me. What bothers me, really, is the, 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 the phlegm that goes with it. <laughs> you see, yeah, it's all right to say, yes, we, we build another temple, etc., whatever it is in accordance with law, not in accordance with law, etc. Mm -hmm. But the very fact, you see, the demolition to my mind was, was, a, was a, a, a distinct era, end of an era and the beginning of another era. And we are living in that other era now, namely something that was there was demolished without authority of law. Whether the judges allowed it, did not allow it, whether the chief minister permitted it or didn't permit it, etc. It's now part of history. It doesn't make any difference whether it was or wasn't. But do you feel that the Supreme Court let the nation down as well? Well, yes, of course they did, because they took an undertaking from somebody which, which meant nothing. And, uh, but they didn't see through the whole thing, of course. So in uh, this new era that yeah, we are living yeah, in? Yeah, new era. It's the post, you must remember, it's the post-demolition era. And, and what has it done to India? Beg your pardon? What has this, in this new era, yeah. in the, this last 25 years since the demolition of the Babri Masjid, yes. what has it done to India? Yeah, yeah except that uh, breeding much more intolerance, that is my regret, great regret. I, I don't know, I don't know the solution. Don't think I, I know all the solutions, I don't. But the importance of this is, and like-minded people do speak that way. Mm -hmm. But somehow, nowadays I find that they are afraid also to speak that way for some reason. Maybe right or maybe wrong, but a lot of people don't, don't like to speak. You've said earlier that, uh, that you were concerned about the fact that a Hindu priest is now leading uh, Uttar of Pradesh. Of course, yes. Well, that's, a, that's a sign of the times. I don't know why nobody else has, has accepted that. It's a sign of the time. This is, what the, this is what people are telling you. The Prime Minister is also telling you. After all, you handpick a particular person. I mean, he may be an extremely good man or a good um, administrator, but that's not the point. You don't take a, a, the, the high priest of a temple in Gorakhpur to become the chief minister of a state and the India's largest state without a message. The message is that, mm -hmm. yes, we are now converting this into a Hindu state. Do we want it that way? I don't, but I, I, I don't count. I mean, we Parsis are very well treated, I must tell you. The present government, in fact, looks upon us uh, with great uh, affection, as it were. And if you speak against the government, the present government in Ahmedabad, amongst Parsis, they will all revolt, uh, I, have, I have no doubt. So that, that, that's not the point. I'm not speaking as a Parsi, sure. I'm speaking as an Indian. Yeah. That's right. So that we, we, we do feel very concerned that what's, what's going to happen to the country because nobody's bothered too much, you see, as to should we have it all one color or one, one group? Does, does, does that make sense? Or is our mixed polity the, the best thing that one can have? I mean, so far. So you're saying that the minorities are under siege? Do, do they feel under siege? I think so. I, I do think that they do feel the minorities particularly. And, and you are right, the Muslim minority in particular. I mean, if you, are, if you must name it, that is, that is so, it does feel under siege. And that, that's where, you see, we, we find that even the, I, 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 I regret to say that many of our newspapers, news channels and all, nowadays also mouth the same majoritarian views of the government because it becomes, it becomes sometimes, uh, for me at least, uh, very, not boring, but actually I feel very scared because What's going to happen? Not to us. I'm not bothered about us. We are on our way out, but you know, our children, our grandchildren who continue to live here in this polity, it's, it's been a great country. And I'm a great ne Nehruvian, you see, <laughs> unlike most people. Although I be do believe that Sardar Patel contributed a great deal. He was a man of action, whereas ne Nehru was a man of ideas. Mm -hmm. But the, together they, they did contribute a great deal. And, uh, Sir, yeah. let me take you back to 1998 when um, you were offered a brief uh, by the Gujarat government. Mm -hmm. And then there were these... Um, the, the no, I appeared for them, actually. You, I, I okay. appeared for them. I, for, and then suddenly, you see, the then chief minister, not, not the, uh, any other chief Keshubai minister. Patel. Yeah, Keshubai Patel. Yes, Keshubai Patel. Yeah, he, he would uh, come to me and I would tell him about rehabilitation and so on. And then I got... got I, so this is the rehabilitation uh, of the tribals who were displaced by the Narbada Dam. The Narbada Dam, that's okay. right. Now, you see, this is where, I mean, uh, to, to, to take you slightly off your, your question, the rule of law and the rule by law becomes a very important uh, di distinction. Mm -hmm. You see, 
some time ago, if you remember, the Yangtze Kiang in China was sought to be stopped. Yeah. The river with an enormous dam. And the Three Gorges thing. Dam. Three Gorges Dam with 600 odd square miles of thing being uh, inundated. And I asked a Swiss expert who came here in connection with the Indus Water Treaty. And uh, he, was, uh, he was adjudicating upon it. And then at a social function, I said, that what do you think about this? He said, after some reflection, he said, well, after 50 years, it'll be heaven, magnificent. But I said, it meant the displacement of two million people mm -hmm. from their homes, which would never be permitted in a rule of law country like ours. Mm -hmm. But a rule by law country, it, it, it's permitted. I'm not saying that, I'm not trying to denigrate a rule by law country, but that, that's the, the conception, because after all, a rule by law country means greatest good for the greatest number. It may well be that that's the correct thing to do, but you cannot introduce that sort of thing in India. And that's, that's the reflection of this Narbada Dam thing. But it did happen. But it did happen uh, to, to some extent. It was, uh, to, to a great extent, it was alleviated. Mm -hmm. but, but in Madhya Pradesh, it wasn't, and so because there was no rehabilitation was very poor as compared to Gujarat and so on. And then this led yeah, but to. This led, yeah, this led to some Christians' Bibles being burnt and so on and so forth. Yeah. And then it led to one thing, I led to another, and then started Christians were in fact being burnt and things yeah. like that. At least there were rumors of that. That's right. This is so the Dang's I, tribals. Yes, yeah. and then I returned the brief, and there was a big hue and cry and so on. About so why did you return the, the brief? No, because that's, that's because uh, uh, how else does one protest? <laughs> how else does a council who appears for the state of Gujarat protest? And after that, I never appeared for the state of Gujarat in any matter. But you did appear for Union Carbide. Well, oh, yes, yes, that's Union Carbide, not the state of Gujarat. You're no, right. Still, you're right. What yes, I'm I saying think. is that the Union, it was because of the Ubin, the, car, the gases yeah, from the right. Union Carbide yes, plant, which yes. killed thousands of people. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But you still appeared for yeah, Union Yeah, I agree with you. I did appear and I regretted it. And you'll find that in my book as well. But that, that's, that's a fact of, uh, you're right, absolutely correct. No, the reason I'm asking you, sir, yeah. is in the Union Carbide case, you said you, you know, the argument was that until proved guilty, yeah, right? Yeah. Now, I'm saying, would you, if you were to be asked by the Gujarat government today to take up the case on the riots, for yeah, example, yeah. on behalf of the state, yeah. would you do that? No, I wouldn't. Why but not? I, I'm, because I'm a better informed today, perhaps, than I was before. So that, it, it, you are right, absolutely correct. I, I, I'll give you my book where I've I mentioned no, I've, 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 I've read, read, I've read seen that. your book, yes, yes sir. That chapter. Where I mentioned all this, the, the, the reason why I put it, why, what, that I regretted it and why I regretted it and so on and so forth. But I want to ask yeah. you about the Gujarat riots. Yeah. How do you think that changed Gujarat? If, as a lawyer, <coughs> as a legal luminary, yeah. would you accept that case? For, 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 for whom? For the state. Uh, no, no, definitely not. Because, because, because there, there, was a, there was a shady past about it. Because, because there are a lot of other things that had happened and that one read about. And fortunately, you see, we had, a, we had a chairman of the Human Rights Commission, Justice Verma, yeah. who, quite frankly, foxed me when he came out with, this, with uh, how good Hindutva I was in a judgment of the Supreme Court, which made me a little worried, but got me worried. But when he retired and he took up the job of the Human Rights Commission and chairman, he re totally redeemed himself. And uh, he, he was the person who investigated a large part of all this and ultimately came to the conclusion that uh, this was nothing but a sort of a racial hatred that went on. So it's again, it's been 15 <coughs> years since the riots. Uh, but it, you see, there's no closure to all these things. It's the same thing about the Sikh riots. I mean, there's no closure to it. Exactly. It's, yeah, the same thing we, 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 for which Muslims are not responsible and so on. But, but I would argue as a citizen yeah. that I would like closure on the 84 riots where 3,000 Sikhs were killed. There you are. Closure for the 2002 riots yeah. where again yeah, about but there's a no thousand. closure. There's no closure because then, then there's no explanation except, except the fact that unfortunately political parties all around, I mean political parties either take one extreme view or another extreme view mm -hmm. and neither of them fits into the ethos of our society. That's my view. So 70 years, as you look back on 70 years of the Republic, what do you think? No, I am still an optimist. I, I think as long as India remains one, as long as we don't have all these tendencies to go off the handle, 
as we seem to be doing at the moment. But uh, I, I, I still feel that as long as India remains one, there's it's a tremendous, India is a country of tremendous progress. You were born in, in, in 29 in, in Rangoon. Yeah, that's right. When it was still a part of British, British India. British India, yeah, this was and all British India. And then in we, 1947, we, you saw the country 42, sort of... 42, we checked out, yeah, my parents and I, we checked out. Uh, and then in 1947, you saw the country being divided into, yeah, yeah. into yes, two yes, countries. Correct, correct. correct. You know, in fact, in 37, it was divided into two countries. That's into right. British Burma and British India. Yeah, but no, and I'm saying India and Pakistan in 1947. Yes, yes, India and Pakistan. With this. But those are all the ifs of history. You see, if you could could do something about it, God alone knows. Do you remember uh, the 15th of August 1947 well? Yeah, yeah, reasonably well. Yeah, reasonably. I was in college and uh, just uh, just about. And, in and how did it and how did it feel to be an independent Indian? I don't know. I I was not very enthusiastic about being an independent Indian, but it was the uh, trauma of partition that actually affected people like me. That uh, what's what's happening? I mean, why, why are people just quarrelling with one another? And I think that that's that's perhaps the the the, the downside of, of. And you uh, had friends who left uh, yeah, from Bombay yeah, and yeah, went to Pakistan. Yeah, went to Pakistan. A lot of people went. A lot of people whom we knew also, and they they tried there. They were doing quite well, etc. But then ultimately, things have become worse and worse and worse. And uh, this non-friendliness with neighboring countries and not, has not helped us at all. Yeah. Not, not. Okay, sir, so I'd like to bring you back yeah. now yeah. to ask you about, you know, the judiciary is a, is a major plank. Um, yes, of, of course, and of the independence life. of it is. And the independence of it. Yeah. You took the words out of my mouth. What, yeah. do, you, what do you think? Why is the, I, we feel, citizens feel that the judiciary should be much more independent. Yeah. Do you agree? Mm. Yes, I think so, they definitely. And it, perhaps it is. Judge by judge, I mean, not necessarily court by court, judge mm -hmm. by judge. If you can pick out one particular person and say, yes, yes he is now, or oh, she is now helping more than others. But uh, after all, we come from the same stock. You must realize that, so that we are what we are as citizens, as lawyers, as judges. We all, but I think the lawyer community particularly mm -hmm. has much to answer for and much to much to in what way much to answer for because actually they it's the only profession which is mentioned in our constitution okay, you are you are entitled to a legal practitioner of your choice right. when uh, when you if you are arrested etc which is a great great boon to mm -hmm. humankind but that's why i said that so far as we lawyers are concerned the emergency has revealed or rather that brief period, year and a half or so, that there was enormous courage shown by groups of lawyers, which has never been shown since, and which is like an inoculation that we've had. And I believe that, uh, that the importance of the legal profession is extremely important in this country. Yes, you may say lawyers uh, will strike work, lawyers charge too much fees, and so on and so forth. It goes on and on and on. There are a lot of complaints about lawyers, complaints about judges, etc. But together, lawyers and judges do, I think, establish or try to establish a rule of law situation. So what do you think today? Do you have that today? Do you oh, have yes, this inoculation so. yes, today? Yes, we have that. We have that inoculation still works. I, I hope it will continue to work, uh, at least uh, for, our, for the sake of our children and our children's children. So in these 70 years of the Republic of, of India's and independence... There have been ups and downs, a lot of ups and a lot of downs, a lot of ups and a lot of downs. Ups also, you must remember that... Tell me, a, give uh, me one example of, of, yes, of, yes, of yes, an up. Yes, I mean, uh, up is... Well, Everything keeps, keeps getting improved. Mm -hmm. There is an improvement in all, all sections of society, economy, the health, etc., right. etc., et much yeah. better than what it was. And do you feel the Constitution has redeemed itself, yeah. or it's, it's still a working Constitution? It's a working Constitution. It, it, it speaks, and the judges do enforce it. Mm -hmm. Occasionally, when they don't, the lawyers get up in and start protesting and making a big noise. But nonetheless, it carries on. But that's, that's what I personally think, that this, we've had this for 70 years. And uh, 70 years is long enough, I think, to 
get it inculcated into the system. You don't think the constitution has exhausted itself? Oh, no, not at all, not at all. On the contrary, the constitution is inexhaustible, quite frankly. But today fact, when the Supreme Court says... But you know, no, but you must also know, okay. forget uh, today, but you must know how this came in. See, our constitution, the, the people who decided previous cases knew that the Hindus are in a majority. Mm -hmm. They knew that they are the majority speaking people. And yet, and yet, it is they who devised the theory of the basic structure of the constitution. That was a very brilliant idea, whether it came from Pakistan, as it seems to have from a particular judge there. Did it? Who, yes, it did, yes, in a, in a particular case. And it, in fact, it's mentioned by one of our judges. Which judge here. is this? Uh, justice Cornelius I see. of Pakistan. He was then became the later chief justice. At least the germ of that idea. So explain to our view, your viewers what this basic structure you means. You see, the basic structure means this, that in a constitution, there's a power to amend the constitution. And you can always amend it. You can do anything you like to it. But they knew that in a, the possibility of a majoritarian government hmm. would definitely be, had to have some safeguard. And what should be that safeguard? So they thought about it and seven to six ultimately came to the conclusion in that famous judgment, the great human rights case, which is Keshavan and Bharati. Right. They, came and they came to the conclusion that the constitution cannot be abrogated, it can be amended, it cannot be destroyed, and certain concepts that are basic to the constitution, like rule of law and things like that, are eternal. So you now, think the judiciary has lived up to this? That's that's my that's, that's the that, that's the hallmark in my that's the that's a shining star okay. for which they must be proud today. Right. Although there have been many many regrets etc. Many many pitfalls into which the judiciary has fallen. There have been... Like what? Like things of corruption amongst the judiciary, amongst judges, etc. That's going on. Mm -hmm. Not in the higher judiciary, but at any rate, it does, does permeate all around. Yeah. There's much to be desired, There's certainly much to be desired. But, uh, but, uh, but I still have great confidence, not only in the judiciary, but in the country in the people of India. So last uh, couple of questions, yeah, Mr. Nariman, yeah. and I want to bring you back to the Babri Masjid yeah. judgment that yeah. is before us. Yeah. Now, the Supreme Court also said earlier this year that, that there should be an out-of-court settlement. What oh, do you no, think? No, I, I was, I'm totally opposed to that. No, no. There can't be an out-of-court. This is not a matter which can be settled. It can only be settled by law. And law means the law as rightly or wrongly propounded by the highest court because there's nobody else. You can't go to God for, for a law. You have to be content with all the institutions we have. So you uh, don't think that, you know, citizens outside the court could have oh, come no, together no, no, and, no, and sort no, of no, 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 given or all. taken? Oh, no, no, no. There's no give or take there. there. You have to decide these things. There, you have to say something about it. It's very important. And you must also realize that when they upheld the enactment which was challenged, the three judges who upheld it were Hindus. And the two judges who opposed it were minority. Yeah. One Muslim and one Parsi. This is the 2010 judgment. Uh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, that's very, very significant. I've always remarked on that. This Why is the judgment it? when the, it was divided three ways yeah, three, between three, the Nirmohi Akhara, yeah. the, the right. Sunni Waqf yeah, Board, yeah, that's and right. the. That's right, that's right. All that went on and, and on and Ram on. Lala. Yes, yeah. and yes. In fact, I appeared for one of the parties at that point of time. But I'm just saying. So the Hindu judges, you, yeah, you're the saying. The Hindu judges voted one way, the minority judges who voted the other way. I mean that that's the basic, basic tenet, mm -hmm. which which I regret, which I regret deeply regret, because there could have been some accommodation at that point of time. The judges said, the minority judges said that this this law is wrong, this law has to be struck down, the law which they had devised. And the majority upheld it. Do you think we are going into a... We are. Yes, I, I think so. I definitely think so. I, I'm afraid I think so. Unless we reverse it and some method by which it is to be reversed, I don't know how. But it, there's no, no doubt in my mind that uh, we and are moving towards a one religion state. Which and, is, and you're saying that this is happening in the last few years? In the last few years, under, under, under a particular... Since regime. the BJP yeah, came to power. Yeah, and a particular regime which believes in that, truly believes in it. I'm not saying that they are hypocrites or any such thing. On the contrary, they believe in it. 
And if they believe in it, then that, that's, the, that's, the, that's the fundamental problem for us. So then what's the big difference between Indira Gandhi, who imposed the emergency, was quite authoritarian, and the present government led by Narendra Modi. You, you answer also, that. You no, answer sir. That. No, you're quite right. You're quite so right. what's the essential there, there, difference? It's a one of degree. It's one of degree. It's one of degree. But of course, an emergency, you must remember, is that no rule of law, please. That, that's where law, law gets lifted, you see. And then you have to ferret out how to arrange things amongst yourselves. So yourself. there's no, no emergency today, so we have hope. No emergency. That's, that's our hope. Yeah. No emergency today, and we have hope. Great hope. We, we must. We, we can't. We can't give up hope. We can't give up. At seventy, certainly we can't give up hope. <laughs> at at, at eighty nine, I don't give up hope. <laughs> so on the one hand, there is hope, yeah, there, but on the other hand, you're... there's some despair. There's some despair. There's some despair. But without hope, a man cannot live. <laughs> no, thank you so much for speaking to the Indian Express. This is Jyoti Malhotra for the Indian Express. Mm -hmm.